In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to retopologize a character in ZBrush. The purpose of good topology is to ensure that your character maintains good structure during animation and doesn't deform in ways you don't want. There are many ways to proceed with this process. I'm going to show you two methods that I have found to be the most effective that rely almost entirely on ZBrush. The first method is using the ZRemesh function. This is essentially depending on the program to generate the new topology for you. It will, however, need some guidelines to get the most desirable result. There may also need to be some further adjustment in a modeling program such as 3ds Max or Maya. For the ZRemesh method, make sure that your character's head is separated from the body. I temporarily recommend doing this to help ZRemesh compute your topology more effectively. We can later reattach the head to the body. If your character's head is attached to the rest of your mesh like on this one, you can simply detach it with the mask tool. Hold Ctrl and select the head, then click Split in your subtool panel. You will now notice that the two meshes have gaps in them. Do a quick Dyna mesh to fill these in. Now with the head separated, we are ready to start the Z remesh process. We are going to start this by drawing out the Z remesher guides. The shortcut for this brush is B Z. Ah, you can change your draw size just like you can with any other brush by using the box brackets. Remember to activate symmetry by pressing X. You can remove any lines you don't want by holding Alt and dragging over them like so. To get rid of all of your lines, just hold Alt and click once. As you can see, I am following the anatomical structure of the face with these lines. This is going to help the Z remesher generate a closer topology to what we are after. Before carrying out any direct changes to your base mesh, I advise you create a duplicate subtool first. Generally, we are looking for loops around the brows, eyes, edges of the nose, mouth and jaw, as these are the parts of the face that will move the most during animation. Once these guides are in place, we can go over to the Z remesh function in the geometry panel. You'll notice these settings. I currently have my targeted active points to 5000 which is around 10,000 triangles. I also have a DAP selected, which means that the remesher will attempt to allocate more triangles to where the sharp corners are in my base mesh. The intensity of this can be manipulated by the adaptive size slide. The curve strength slide will determine how much of an influence my drawn guides have to the final result. I've just pressed said remesh to test out my current settings. As we can see, the topology has been brought down and maintained a nice spread over my entire mesh. The anatomical curves around the eyes and mouth are not great though. The total active points of the mesh is down from 13,000 points to 800,000, which is a significant improvement. However, I am currently aiming for my full bodied character to be 40,000 triangles with clothing and hair. This means that my entire flesh anatomy should aim for around 30 to 35,000 triangles maximum. With this in mind, I'd say that the head should be between 10 to 15,000 triangles in total which is around 5,000 to 7.5 thousand active points. The settings in ZRemesh require some experimenting until you get the result you are happy with. There really is no one size fits all, but if you adjust the sliders and keep testing out the process, eventually you will get a result that you can use with some minor alterations. Another setting we can experiment with is the Use Polypaint option underneath the Curve Strength slider. Simply press this and with RGB selected, paint red where you wish for more active points to gather, and blue where you want less of the points to gather. You can also determine the intensity of this by using the slider to the right. Continue with this process over the whole body. Try to keep your guides minimal and only in areas where it is needed to follow the muscular curves of your character. As you can see, I have now somewhat got down a base mesh that I am mostly happy with. There are some slight inaccuracies, but I can fix these in 3ds Max whilst I am joining the head and the body together like so. So that's the first method of retopologizing down. It is not the most accurate, but it's probably the most time efficient. If at this point you're worried about how your end topology should look, not a problem. I have left two links to what I have found to be good guides in structuring your final geometry in the description of this video. This actually leads me nicely on to the second method of retopology, which I personally recommend over the first method. So in this method, we are going to surface model the new topology over our already existing high resolution mesh using a Z-sphere with the edit topology option. However, 
we are not going to model all of the 40,000 triangles that will exist in our end result. Instead, we are only going to model what is essential to our topology, and then subdivide and project the rest. To start this process, you will ideally need your high resolution base mesh as one solid element, and allocate it to its own subtool slot. Now append a Z sphere as a separate subtool, and make sure that it is scaled down and fits within your high resolution base mesh. Scroll down to the topology panel and click on Edit Topology. With symmetry turned on, we can draw our new surface topology by simply clicking point to point. To remove a point, hold Alt and click whilst in draw mode. To select a different point, go into move mode and click on it like so. Once you are happy with this topology, press A to preview how the mesh will look with the faces visible. This can then be subdivided up to whatever resolution we like. After this, we will then snap these points closer to the detail of the high resolution base mesh by using the project function. Here is the head topology some stages later on. I have completed this by following the video How to Retopologize a Head Like a Boss by Danny Mac 3D, listed in the description. You'll notice that I have not yet bothered to manually topologize the mouth. This is because ZRemesh does a decent enough job of this anyway, and I can easily combine it later on in 3ds Max. You will likely find that in some places it is best to blend these two methods that I am teaching you. For the rest of the body, I am following the video Retopo the Body by UIW, linked in the description. As you can see, I have kept the edge flow consistent all the way down the model, and stayed relatively true to the muscular structure of the character. From here on out, it is very much a case of repeating the same method until you reach a result you are happy with. Remember not to model every single polygon, but do enough so that you have good topology and then subdivide after. For this model, I've created around 8,000 triangles for what is now a 32,000 triangle mesh, leaving me with 8,000 triangles to use for hair and accessories. The only task now is to snap these subdivided triangles to a closer position of my original base mesh. To do this, have your high resolution subtool above your new low topology subtool. Now select your low topology subtool, and whilst your high resolution subtool is visible, scroll down to project and click project. Now you can see that my new topology has become more closely shaped to the higher resolution than it was before. After unwrapping this low topology model, we will carry on subdividing and projecting an instance of this mesh until it becomes our new high polygon model. But that is for another video. This model's retopology process is now complete.